anatomy and physiology for the beauty industry, the skin. In our industry, there is one part of the body that we are regularly asked to improve in appearance, decongest, rehydrate, soothe and more, the skin. It's the largest organ, the protective covering of the body, and we put it through its paces by expecting it to protect us from infection and invasion, while exposing it to sunburn, chemicals, cuts, bruises, the list goes on. Skin comes in many different colours, textures, tones and types, and we must respect each individual's requirements and treat it accordingly. So before we apply the makeup or begin the massage, let's take a look at what skin is and the many functions it performs. Human cells. What are cells? Everything in your body is made from millions of tiny cells. They are the basic living structure that keep us alive. Individual cells in different parts of the body might look different and have different functions, but they all work together to maintain homeostasis, the body's natural balance, and keep us healthy. We can actually see old skin cells on the skin's surface every day. We exfoliate these away. And if you've ever placed sticky tape on your skin and removed it, you can clearly see dead skin cells that have transferred over. Human cells. So what do they look like? Each cell has a nucleus, and we can think of this in simple terms as the cell's brain. The nucleus contains the information that determines what that cell will do within your body. This is enclosed by the nuclear membrane, a protective skin around it. The cell is filled with cytoplasm, which helps it to send and receive information via tiny organelles. Finally, it's covered by the cell membrane, a thin skin that controls what is allowed in and out of the cell, such as nutrients and waste. Human cells. What are their function? When we talk about metabolism, we are talking about how efficiently your cells use oxygen and nutrients to create energy and heat. Cells also use the nutrients you ingest to help you grow and repair whilst removing the waste that your body is unable to use. They use oxygen for respiration, the waste including carbon dioxide being exhaled by your lungs, and they are frequently reproducing. Human cells. So when do cells become tissue? Cells become tissue when they group together to perform a shared function. When similar groups of tissues club together, they become organs. This is when a group of skin cells work together to become skin tissue. There are various different types of tissue in the body, all with different jobs to do, such as nervous, muscular, connective and epithelial tissue. Human skin. So what's the skin's job? To recap, many millions of similar cells have groups together to create skin tissue, and the skin is an organ. It has many functions that we need to know, such as it has various warning signs to alert you, such as rashes, redness and itching. These reactions let you know that something isn't normal either on the outside or inside. Nerve endings in the skin allow you to feel touch, pain, extremes of temperature, different pressures and textures. It contains a layer of subcutaneous fat, which is an energy reserve and uses sunlight to help manufacture vitamin D, an essential life vitamin. It can absorb moisture from the surface and control the movement of moisture upwards from deeper layers. Skin regulates your temperature through sweating when you're too hot and can also help to remove waste this way. Skin protects your internal organs from injury and prevents bacteria from entering the body. The waterproof qualities of sebum, a naturally produced oil, offer protection against dehydration and the naturally occurring pigment melanin protects you to a degree from UV rays. Human skin, the skin's layers. So we understand that your skin does a fantastic job at keeping you safe and healthy, but we all know how delicate it can be when it comes to cuts and bruises. It is then that you experience how fragile it can be, paper cuts being particularly uncomfortable. The skin is approximately two to three millimetres thick, thinnest around the eyes, and can be separated into three main layers, the epidermis, the dermis, the subcutis. The epidermis. This is the outer layer of the skin's surface and is thinner than the dermis underneath. It gains nutrients from the dermis. It is in itself made from five layers of cells, each with a different name. These are from the outside in. Stratum corneum. 
The horny top layer, which is an outer layer of dead, hardened cells. These are regularly shed from the surface due to desquamation, and the facial treatments that we perform also help to remove these. Stratum lucidum. The transparent layer, which is sometimes referred to as the waterproof layer of the skin. Stratum granulosum. The grainy layer, which contains lipids to prevent fluid loss from the body. Stratum spinosum. The prickly layer, which helps to provide some robustness against damage. Stratum germinatum, basal. The base layer, where cells are produced. They keratinize as they move upwards through the layers. It takes a cell approximately 28 days to work its way from the base to the surface. This is called cell turnover. If you took a cross section of the epidermis, you would see sweat ducts, hair follicles and nerve endings present, all appendages of the skin structures within it with their own job to do to maintain homeostasis. The dermis. This is the middle thicker layer of the skin which is responsible for skin tone and colour and houses the elastic fibres and collagen that give your skin strength and flexibility. You will notice these decreasing as you age resulting in loss of tone, sagging and wrinkles. A cross section of the dermis would show you blood and limb vessels, nerve endings, hair follicles and both sweat and sebaceous glands. The subcutaneous layer. The subcutis is the inner fatty layer of the skin responsible for protective cushioning and insulation through heat regulation. If you looked at the subcutis you would see blood vessels, root supply of hair follicles and adipose tissue, fat.